came to a small Pennsylvania community to help dedicate a Roman Catholic shrine with roots deep in medieval Poland, Hungary, and even the ancient deserts of the Middle East. The National Shrine of Our Lady of Częstochowa at Doylestown, Pennsylvania, a modern expression of age-old devotion to the Blessed Virgin, a new means toward an unchanging purpose, service to God, behind the concrete, steel, and glass, behind the centuries of belief and devotion, always one essential, people. Members of a religious order, the Pauline Fathers. Vicar General of the Pauline Fathers in this country and Director of the Shrine is Father Michael M. Zemzewski. Throughout centuries of change, in good times and bad, we of the Pauline Fathers have pursued our central purpose, closeness to God through special devotion to Our Lady, the Blessed Mother of God, and to advance the betterment of people. With this as our theme, our work takes many forms, as you will see. Here, at the shrine, we are creating a center of religious life and thought. We are drawing strength from the culture of the past, from the arts and languages of the old countries of Europe. But we are moving forward in the American tradition, teaching, creating, preaching, educating, serving social and pastoral needs in the spirit of the times, new times, new aspirations, new aims. Also, our special history links us with Poland and Central Europe. We are now the American province of an international order. This is our American home. We have an American outlook and we wish American Catholics to share our joy in paying special honor to Our Lady. You will understand us better if you know a little more about our history. Southern Hungary, near the city of Pesh, early in the 13th century. In the forests and mountains lived religious hermits, solitary, offering their lives to God in prayer and meditation. Many of them seeking to be like St. Paul, the first hermit, who lived alone in the Egyptian desert for over 90 years in the third and fourth centuries. Here in 1215, Bishop Bartholomew brought a number of hermits together in the first community or monastery of the Order of St. Paul, the first hermit, and from here, the Pauline Fathers spread throughout a good part of Europe. In those early days, among the Pauline Fathers, some continued to lean toward the solitary, contemplative way, while others became more active and began to involve themselves with the needs of the people around them. Over the years and centuries, the spirit of the order developed, flexible, adjusting to different needs at different times and periods. Many became priests, preaching, hearing confession, saying mass, providing other pastoral services. Others turned to education, building schools, teaching, educating the sons of the noble and royal families establishing universities, helping to stimulate intellectual growth, contributing to philosophy, theology, science, outwardly far removed now from its monastic origins, inwardly pursuing the same patterns and goals. The order's activities ranged from the practice of pharmacy to the pursuit of agriculture, to the engineering and building of bridges and roads, in architecture, the Pauline Fathers helped to create a distinctive church style, and a number of fathers became classical poets 
in the literatures of several European nations. By the start of the 16th century, the order had provinces in Poland, Germany, Czechoslovakia, Croatia, Northern Italy, and Portugal. And the Portuguese province soon was sending fathers as missionaries to Argentina and Uruguay, where many of them became martyrs. But the backbone of the order remained in Hungary. With over 200 monasteries, the order was so fully identified with the country that an old prophecy stated, Hungary, my sweet fatherland, together with the Pauline fathers, wilt thou grow, and with them thou shalt go down. The prophecy bore fruit, for in 1526, when the Turks defeated a combined Polish-Hungarian army at Mohac, the Pauline fathers lost over 100 monasteries in Hungary, and the country suffered more than 150 years of Turkish occupation. Long before this, the Pauline fathers had already become the special guardians of various shrines devoted to the Holy Mother. At Remeter near Zagreb, Yugoslavia, at Maria Tal, the Valley of Mary in Czechoslovakia, at Zirkvenica on the Dalmatian coast in Yugoslavia, and of course, the original shrine of Our Lady of Częstochowa in Poland. No one really knows the origin of the venerated image, darkened with time and called the Black Madonna. Some say it was painted by Saint Luke, that it traveled from Jerusalem to Constantinople. What we do know is that in 1382, it was brought to Częstochowa and entrusted to the Pauline Fathers in their monastery on top of Jasna Bura, the Bright Hill. Ever since, it has been the focus of Marian devotion and a source of spiritual strength for the Polish people and nation. And throughout the history of Poland and Central Europe, there has been need for such inspiration. At the Battle of Grunwald in 1410, against the Teutonic Knights, legend says that the Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Częstochowa, appeared over the combined Polish and Lithuanian forces, praying for them. The Teutons were defeated. In 1655, Our Lady gave protection and strength to 230 defenders of the fortress and monastery at Częstochowa against a 40-day siege by 4,000 Swedish soldiers. Led by Father Augustin Kordetsky, prior of the Pauline Fathers Monastery, the small band forced the Swedes to withdraw. Kings, queens, and nobles came to pay homage to Our Lady, and they called her Queen of Poland. And, as in Hungary, the Pauline Fathers became almost a national order, identified with the Polish people and nation. Their work flourished during periods of peace and stability, and suffered through wars, partitions, persecutions. In 1786, Joseph II, Emperor of Austria and King of Hungary, dissolved all religious orders in Hungary, including the Pauline Fathers. And it was almost 150 years before they could return. Leading the way back in 1934 with a group of 16 fathers and brothers from Poland was Father Michael Zemzewski. After establishing headquarters in Budapest, we opened an officiate house in Page just 15 miles away from St. James Hill, the cradle of our order some 750 years ago. Our novices and students made inspiring pilgrimages 
to the ancient ruins of our very first monastery. He would approach the ruins, praying, singing the old hymns of our order, and kissing the old stones. We had come through many trials, and always we had renewed ourselves, always under the protection of the Holy Mother. And there were more trials ahead. World War II, the spread of Nazis, the partition and occupation of Poland by the Germans and the Russians, the concentration camps, the assault on all religions, the problems of survival in the turbulence of the post-war years. In those years, the order suffered suppression in Hungary. But in Poland, some measure of freedom was gained. And the Pauline fathers actually expanded and opened new monasteries. There are ten now, besides the one at Częstochowa. And now Our Lady of Częstochowa became a rolling point for the Polish people. In 1946, and again in 1956, millions of Poles took a vow of fidelity to their queen and to God, placing the future of their country in the hands of Our Lady. Each year, between three and four million Poles visit the shrine at Częstochowa to renew their devotion to the Blessed Mother. And now the idea came. Częstochowa was playing its important role for the entire nation of Poland. Why not an American Częstochowa? A great and beautiful center for the American expression of faith and devotion to Our Lady. It was time then for the Pauline Fathers to move outward again, as we had during our earlier years of growth in Europe. There were many signs that America wanted us and welcomed us. And in 1951, I came to this country, of which I am now proud to be a part. With the establishment of our first monastery here in 1955, our work was fully underway. It has flourished because there was a need and there was support to meet it. Even Pope Paul VI, during our last visit in Rome, expressed his satisfaction and granted his blessing to our work. We have the shrine, the first units of the monastery. More buildings will be added. We have plans and programs reaching far into the future. But all of them depend on people, priests, brothers. People who find within themselves the urge to serve God fully forever. People who wish to express their total devotion to the Blessed Mother. It is not for everyone. There are many ways to serve, but for those who choose religious life, the future is wide with promise and holds rewards beyond measure. In the order, you can be a priest or you can be a brother. The differences in kind and degree of training what does a modern Pauline father do? Most important, as in the first monastery over 750 years ago, he lives his own deeply religious life through liturgy. He prays publicly, together with others, alone, performing all the religious obligations he has freely undertaken. As a Pauline father, you might have pastoral duties, 
ministering to the hundreds of thousands of pilgrims who visit the shrine at Doylestown each year, celebrating mass in the big church, preaching, delivering the sermons you have written, hearing confession, and administering other sacraments. You might participate in and lead retreat activities, giving lectures, providing guidance, holding discussions with laymen who seek spiritual revival and renewal. As a Pauline father or brother, you could work in a rich and expanding world of intellect and culture, exploring religious history, theology and philosophy, art and literature, languages, studying and interpreting, linking the culture of the past with that of the present, tying the thought and belief of the old world to that of the new, and communicating your knowledge and insight to others. Some do this by teaching, both within the order and outside as well. Father Attila Rao, for example, teaches religion at the nearby Academy of the Sisters of Mercy. There are many ways to communicate. Words. How else do you state a message and try to reach the minds and hearts of people? Like Father Sales, you might be an editor of a monthly magazine. Yasnagura named for the hill on which the original shrine of Our Lady is located. Part of it is printed in Polish. There are, after all, some 10 million Polish Americans in this country, and the rest in English. Materials relating to the shrine and to Marian devotion. Articles on broader Polish and cultural subjects. News from the shrine. Reporter, writer, editor, publisher. Like Father Sales, you could be all of them at once. As Vicar General of the American province, you would be a spokesman for the order, reaching out to as many people as possible. Nie chcemy i nie możemy zadowolnić się tym, co mamy, co posiadamy. Pniemy się w górę wyżej. Every week, Father Michael Zemzewski prepares a radio broadcast that goes out over 24 stations throughout the country. It is today's order, using today's means to reach today's people. But the great effort of reaching out to people could never be made without the daily routine, often hard labors of many hands behind the scenes. Pauline fathers and brothers, each contributing in his special way to the large work. From each, an act of devotion to Our Lady of Częstochowa. It is a busy, productive life, in step with the world and the times. And there is always more work than dedicated hands to do it. How do you become part of it? First, you must be within the age limits, anywhere from 18 to 30 years old, of good character, education, and morals. But mostly, you must feel the rightness of what you are setting out to be and do. You must want it very much. You are now a candidate. For two weeks, if your goal is to be a priest, or for three months, if you want to be a brother, you will stay at the monastery. 
a period of mutual exploration, a kind of feeling out. Is the order right for you? Are you right for the order? If the answer is a double yes, you will enter the novitiate at Catanning, Pennsylvania, near Pittsburgh. Then you will put on the habit, the outward sign of the long preparation you are starting. Your first act here will be to make a retreat, to meditate closely and deeply on your future vocation in the order. And you will start your religious training under the guidance of the master of novices. For one year, if you are training for the priesthood, for two, if you're going to become a brother. There will be lectures and many forms of spiritual exercises. This is the period of intense spiritual formation. And when it is over, you take your first vows at the altar of the church. Vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, sworn to over the Ten Commandments. Your own decision freely to imitate Christ, a significant moment for you a very proud one for parents and relatives. These vows are for three years, to be renewed then for another three years. And at that point, your decision becomes final. If you don't have enough schooling, or you simply don't want to become a priest, you are now a brother, and you will receive training in a trade or skill, or perhaps to be a teacher, this is your way of serving God and paying homage to Our Lady. On the other hand, if you want to go further and become a priest, there will be added years of study at a seminary. Philosophy, history, canon law, scriptures, Bible studies, apologetics, social, moral, and pastoral theology, Latin, Greek, Hebrew, music, psychology, and many more subjects. Then you will be ordained. You will be a priest, a Pauline father, another in a long, never-ending line of guardians of the Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Chanstahova. I am reminded of an oak tree which still stands near the lake of St. James Hill on the site of the first monastery in Hungary. Tradition says this oak was there when the Pauline Fathers set up their first community over 750 years ago. Many of its branches have no life, but even on seemingly dry branches you can see leaves and new branches. At this tree, I used to tell the fathers and brothers the history of our order and the calamities it had survived. So it was with the oak tree, but its trunk is alive and it still is able to give new life and keep strong against the winds of time and the hardship of life. This oak tree, to me, symbolizes our ancient order of St. Paul, the first hermit. We welcome the new life that you help bring to our tree. Yes,